All right, so with that, let's start the panel. Um, now we have, um, we're gonna have Laurel Maceline from SFO kick it off. Um, all of these speakers that are gonna get up and speak, their bios are in the program that you received when you came in. So just in, you know, in the essence of time, I'm not gonna read all their bios. So, all right, I'll turn it over to Laurel. Good evening, thank you so much for coming out tonight. As Helen said, my name is Laurel Maceline and I come from the airport's office of Economic and Community Development, which manages all of the workforce development at SFO and also all of the small business, many of our training programs, and access to all of the jobs. So um, before we get started today, the airport services all nine Bay Area counties. So myself and my colleague here, Jesse Bustos, we have the esteemed opportunity to interface with a lot of different CTE programs and sit on many different CTE advisory boards, and I just have to say based on that experience that San Mateo is really getting it right. And I want to have um, just one more big congratulations to Helen and to Nancy for putting something like this together. I know there's a lot of CTE leaders in the room. <laughs> serve a lot of credit for um, really putting a lot of effort to make sure all of the right people are at the table so that they can deliver this information to you. So a little bit about the airport. First, I've promised to give as um, the largest employer in San Mateo County. Do people know that the airport is actually the largest employer in San Mateo County? Right. It's a lot of different employers, so it's not necessarily something that shows up on the EDD track as the number one employer, but by the number of jobs, we are the largest employer in San Mateo County. So as the largest employer, I've been given the opportunity to kind of give a regional perspective in terms of jobs forecasting in the market. So um, a little bit about San Francisco, San Mateo County, and the national perspective. The national unemployment rate is 3.3%. California's unemployment rate is 3.5%. San Francisco's 1.8%. And San Mateo, even lower, is at 1.7%. Essentially, what that means is we are in a full employment economy. Everybody that wants a job, for the most part, and there's many caveats there, has a job. So what does that mean for all of you? It means it's literally the best time ever to graduate high school and be in this job market. And there's many different things working to your advantage. You have choice, and we're gonna talk a lot about that choice tonight and the different career pathways that exist for you. There are higher wages, and companies are having to not only give high wages because it's the right thing to do, but to compete with each other for all of you for new talent, right? And then finally, employers are investing in career pathways and trainings and leveling up in career development in ways that they never have before. So if you get into the electrical union, if you get into a large company like Kaiser, SFO, United, the opportunity to level up and learn a new skill exists in a way that it maybe didn't exist 20 years ago. So um, just to drill down a little bit, a little bit about the airport specifically. Like I said, we're the largest employer here in San Mateo County. We're also the seventh busiest airport in the nation. 57.7 million passengers last year, which was a record for us. 46,000 jobs in essentially every industry sector that you could imagine. An airport is like a small city. 46,000 is also about the same size as the city of San Bruno. And as a result, we have everything. We have everything from executive leadership to ITT to, of course, aviation and hospitality to every trade imaginable. If a car breaks at the airport, it goes to the airport mechanic shop. We have electricians. Anything you'd want to do, you have the ability to do at an airport. So the first thing I always like to do is kind of bust open that stereotype that we have flight attendants and we have pilots because the world of SFO is much larger than that. In terms of our forecasting, we will also be adding 5,000 jobs to the airport economy by 2024. So a really good time to be identifying airport pathways and looking at different opportunities for you. Um, there would really be no time um, to stay in the bay better than this one right now. For today's I got it. presentation, um, I want to focus a little bit on um, aviation positions, and I have my colleague here, Pam Gutman, who um, will likely do a better job at that. But I also want to um, focus on hospitality and tourism positions in aviation hospitality. Do we have any participants here in our CTE programs that are hospitality specific? 
All right, so I'm talking just to you right now. Um, I, I always like to start with aviation, uh, hospitality, and tourism because it's a pet peeve of, of ours that oftentimes hospitality is put into this silo of just hotels, just restaurants. Sometimes we talk a little bit about casinos. Sometimes we talk about cruise ships. But aviation is hospitality, and the beginning of any trip, of any amazing experience, begins at an airport, right? So this graphic here just shows you some of the many hospitality career pathways that exist at the airport. And true to the name of the event tonight, I want to talk to you specifically about some of those jobs that may either reach that 100K mark, exceed it, or if you get some experience in the field, can get you to that $100,000. So specifically, um, flight attendants and in-flight services. Nationally, the average for flight attendants is about $48,000, but can reach $80,000 based on location, experience, and how often you're flying. That's something that does not require um, a four-year degree and doesn't, in many cases, require a two-year degree. Salesperson, aviation sales. We think often about United, Alaska, American, the airlines that we see in the news. What you don't see at airports is the luxury private aviation industry. We have signature flight support and other companies that just kind of fly rich people around. That's a huge market, and that's a huge market in terms of hospitality. It's also a place where you can make a lot of money. And entry level, we have CTE students from San Mateo County who have worked for Signature specifically, moved up and gone to San Jose, used that opportunity to travel around the nation with some of the larger companies. Laurel, um, Laurel we don't see those luxury places because we're too busy um, paying the electrician. Yeah. That's so wrong. <laughs> You're going to get me robbed. We don't, we don't see them often either, but we do know about them, right? right? So a way to see them is to work for them, and a way to receive the benefits and the pay that are associated with them is to enter that career pathway. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this side of the graphic over here in terms of hotels. Has anybody noticed the new, brand new Grand Hyatt SFO when you're traveling down the freeway? Just built a 350-room hotel, state-of-the-art, gorgeous, apprentices work, small businesses contributed, but it also added over 250 jobs to the local economy, and hotels are great places to start at one place and move into another, and some of those higher paid positions like a meetings and event manager or a hotel manager easily exceed $100,000, and there's a pathway that exists that doesn't require a two to four year degree, but I have to plug that we also have some pretty amazing hospitality training programs, specifically Skyline. I think I saw Skyline here earlier in this region where you can gain the experience and the expertise to be able to leg up without having some of that, um, the years of experience that would require you to move into one of those manager type positions. Um, the last thing I wanna touch on in terms of careers where you can make that 100K is food and beverage managers, um, food service in general. So SFO and many airports around the nation are known for high-end restaurants, like Michelin star style restaurants. And as a result, they always have an executive chef, a chef de cuisine, a sous chef. Again, another pathway where you can earn experience and then executive chefs all over the nation make well over $100,000 and depending on the location, upwards of $250,000. So that's just a little insight into the world of aviation hospitality. Um, we know in the San Francisco Bay Area that travel and tourism has always been our bread and butter, right? That's one of our key economic drivers. Um, but this is also a trend nationally. And so in 2018, the travel and tourism sector grew more than any other industry sector besides technology, adding $8.8 .8 trillion to the gross domestic product and 319 million, dollar, um, 319 million jobs. And this shows no sign of slowing down. In terms of global statistics, um, one in 10 jobs is in the hospitality sector and in aviation that's also true. 23% of new jobs are um, also going to be in hospitality in the next five years. I want to touch briefly on um, the aviation me um, mechan mechanic technician positions, we call them AMTs, and I'll leave the nuts and bolts of it to my colleague. I think I'm missing something here. I'll do it. Thanks. 
Um, it's my p colleague Pam here, but an AMT or an aircraft maintenance technician is a fantastic position that many of the larger airlines, specifically United and Alaska, are consistently hiring for and are going to experience a massive workforce transition in the next five years. Workforce transition means a lot of people in those very high paying jobs are going to retire and they will become available. So the airlines and others are kind of scrambling to fill these types of jobs. An AMT or an aircraft maintenance technician basically maintains and repairs um, aircraft. They're similar to a mechanic but on an airplane. The training is 18 months of practical experience and you have to attend an FAA approved AMT school. We have a couple in the region, City College of San Francisco, College of Alameda, and Gavilon over in Morgan Hill. You also have to, in order to um, become an AMT, uh, get some experience and pass three tests that are administered by the FAA. In terms of pay, the median salary nationally is $61,000, but the average is $89,000. And in a region like this, that is again struggling to recruit and retain workers because unemployment is so low, that's going to be more like $102,000, $105,000. So something to really consider, and again, Pam can tell you a little bit more about what that career pathway looks like, but I like to highlight it because one, the airlines are really scrambling to fill these roles and we want to assist them in that effort, but two, we have three local really high quality programs that you can access for much cheaper and for much shorter than you would a four-year traditional education. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about ways that you can access the airport um, through, as an intern or through kind of a trainee opportunity. The airport has 300 interns and trainees annually, largest internship program of any airport in the nation. We actually take many um, interns from the local San Mateo schools in all nine Bay Area counties. And I think we have one here tonight. Jesse, is Rosie still here? Miss Rosie? So Rosie, She's over here. Uh, Raise your hand she's over here. hiding over here, Laurel. Hiding out, Rosie. Okay, so yeah. over here in the corner, we have one of our star interns here, San Mateo resident. Let's give it up for Miss Rosie. <laughs> Rosie <clears throat> was a referral to our summer high school internship program, came to us, worked 10, year, or 10 weeks over the summer, and actually had the opportunity to work in our airport director's office. So our airport director is, like, pretty important, right? He's in charge of 46,000 people. I always say he's like kind of like at Apple. If you saw Tim Cook walking around, the employees know who the director is. And Rosie is directly involved with that office, which is a really big deal. It was such a big deal. I don't think we've had a high school intern there at least in the seven years that I've been at the airport. So Rosie assisted the director's office over the summer, and then she was given the opportunity to continue her studies into the school year, and she still remains with the airport commission today. We've worked around her schedule because we really saw the add value of Rosie and what she was able to bring to the table. I always like to point that out with internships. Internships are not just a feel-good thing that we do as companies. Internships add actual value, time, money, and profitability to the organization that you work for. So big thank you to Rosie for being here as a real-life example of our summer high school internship program working. We'll start recruiting for that program and all of our programs, our summer college internship program, our program called Career Connect, it's employment track, college track, and custodial trainee program, which is for 18 to 27 year olds, specifically except for college track who have decided not to pursue a four year or even a two year degree and are looking at career pathways specifically. That position pays $22 an hour and is between 20 and 35 hours a week. Some of our internship um, benefits are career exposure. We do um, professional development tours, meet and greets with senior staff, tours of the airfield, volunteer opportunities, mentorship. We offer free transportation in the way of SamTrans tokens or free BART for the entirety of your internship. So I always tell students in terms of um, your transportation, if it's free, it might actually be you making money as opposed to another internship where you have to pay to commute. And then finally, we offer free business clothes in the way of vouchers to all of our interns. So over 300 of them have access to that benefit in recognition. People start at different spots and we make the assumption that most 16 year olds don't have a professional office um, wardrobe just hanging around. So myself and my colleague Jesse are here today to advertise this opportunity to you and also to speak to you one-on-one -on -one if you have interests. Again, um, our interns do a variety of things. They work in guest service where they wear this 
fancy uniform and walk around the airport and help customers prepare for their summer travel. They carry an iPad and they tell people where they need to go. They assist with really complex problems. I always say it's the perfect opportunity right before you enter the world of work because there's so much problem solving involved. That's one of our opportunities in hospitality. We've also had um, San Mateo students specifically from Burlingame come to our ITT section and actually help code and build applications. They built something called Chatbot. We have our um, positions in the medical clinic. We have a medical clinic on site at SFO. It's kind of like a mini hospital. We have SFPD positions. Any pathway you can think of, again, we're like a small city that you're interested in, I encourage you to approach myself or my colleague and just ask us about it and see if there might be an internship match, either for the upcoming summer or for the academic school year. So with that, I thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today and provide some perspective. And I'm Great. happy to hand things over to... Thanks, Laurel.